Testing, 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 one, two, three, testing, one, two, three. The rain in Spain falls mainly on the plains. The rain in Spain falls mainly on the plains. There we go. Uh, I had to reboot, having technical problems today. In fact, uh, now I gotta find some software. I gotta launch that. Anyways, good to see you. Como vu? how are you? My name is Wayne McDonald. And we're here to do this thing called Forex. Yeah, it's a Thursday. We've got weekly jobless claims coming out in a little bit. Very cool. We have Jay Powell speaking today. He's going to do Q&A, I believe. And I think the market is positioned incorrectly, so it would be interesting uh, if he uh, surprises some people, huh? Could be a rabbit, could be. You, I was right for my gold analysis. Oh, cool. Right on. I appreciate that, Andreas. All right. So anyways, let's get going. If you want a broker that has a business model that, that doesn't make money by trading against you, you should consider tradersway.com. That's how most brokers make money. They think they're, you're stupid. And they trade against you instead of entering your interbanking, in, entering your trades in the interbanking system. Traders Way wants to enter into a symbiotic relationship with you. They want to provide you a quality service and they want you to succeed. That's why they value your education. You should check them out. By the way, if you look in the description below the video, here's today's video. I've reorganized all the links for you. It's much prettier. I hope you agree. So there's a link to Trader's Way. There's a link to 88 hours of training videos for $88. There's a free 90-minute lecture on risk and reward in trading stocks. You can get free feedback on your technical analysis skills. There's a free 90-minute lecture on fundamental analysis. I wrote a book many years ago. You can buy it on Amazon.com. There's also a free Forex trading course. Yeah, boy, that's a lot of cool stuff. You should check it out. And while you're down there, click the thumbs up button, eh? Pachow! Doesn't that make you feel good? Cool. And by the way, I finished the fifth lecture of our stock trading course, and I'll pop that in here as well. That's free, right then. That one there is free. And, uh, oh, it's good. I really enjoyed doing the stock trading course yesterday. I taught people how to predict a recession probably two months before everybody else has done anything. Okay. Okay. I find that the current tools either tell you too early or too late. Look out, everybody. There's going to be a recession next year, maybe. Nobody does anything. Or how about, hey, everybody, last year we entered recession. Well, that doesn't do anybody any good either. So anyways, uh, that, I liked it. I liked it. So I got a, uh, usually I plan further out, but uh, I'm structuring the next lecture now. It's on my to-do list today. So uh, anyways, you should join the course. It's good. It's good. I'm looking at NASDAQ. So what we've been doing lately is I go through gold oil, Bitcoin, stock market, that kind of stuff. And then I have you vote on a currency. And then we focus on that. So I hope you like that, that format. I've been doing them quickly, though, huh? What do you think? Are they too fast? I feel slow and low. 
today, so maybe I'll go slower and lower today. But let's start our analysis. Oh, you know what I didn't do? I didn't do the disclaimer, shame on me. Let me remind you that trading is risky, not appropriate for everyone. Your past performance, good or bad, is not necessarily indicative of future results. Please stay small, stay humble, focus on the long term, never risk money, cannot afford to lose. Hey, so my name is Wayne. Whoa, whoa. So you have a monitor. I, with two fingers, I can raise or lower my monitor. Uh... <laughs> One of those days. Look terrible, man. Look terrible. <laughs> anyway, sorry. I Look, you're my sweet baby. I want to look pretty for you. Uh, so anyways, uh, sorry. <laughs> Hey man, life's life's hard. So if you like the faster version of these videos where I'm done like in 40 minutes, type in uh, short. If you prefer longer, like an hour to two hours, type in long. Let me know what you stink. Meanwhile, uh, I might do, I'll do whatever you want. If you prefer short, I'll do short. If you prefer long, I'll do long. You're the boss. I'm here for you. Unless I disagree, of course. Yeah. Make a poll. I don't want to make a poll. <laughs> you make a poll. <laughs> Anyways. Uh, so look, uh, we're on a key price here. Right, we're on a key price, and uh, yeah, short, long, long, short, short, long, long, medium, of course, short, long. Yeah, no, I'm get there. I get there. Oh, yeah. Sorry, I was already starting. So anyways, uh, let me move that over. Uh, yeah, I'll move that over. All right, you ready? Yeah, there we go. Sorry, a little discombobulated today. It's one of those mornings, you know? Anyways, uh, so I got that on my mind. And I was... Uh, I was just going to look for the speech... Does anyone know where the speech is today? I don't have it in front of me. I don't see it like scheduled anywhere on YouTube in particular. Yeah. Anyways, uh, let me do one other thing. I know, I'm sorry. Yeah, I got a, like a Windows update, so it's been one of those mornings where I had to like fix things, fix things, fix things, fix things. That's why I'm a little off. Oh, so Powell's speech is until like tonight, basically. So don't don't worry about it. Forget about it. So, anyways, so uh, we have Barkin speaking, Bostic speaking, everybody speaking today. But initial jobless claims are what's coming up next. So. Uh, so anyways, if you were going to trade a range, you're going to look for something like this. That's the risk. Now, I think we all want this to go up because everybody benefits, right? Okay. Okay. So anyways, I got to look for that. Meanwhile, S&P 500 is up. It's great. Oh, let me finish my thought here. So I, I, I exited much of my exposure to this asset when we were, I think it was even before Hamas. Uh, uh, probably in here somewhere. 
I exited, uh, but certainly d uh, after. I exited my position and then hedged with the S&P 500 and then I got out of the hedge. So here's what I'm thinking. Um, if it breaks out and then pulls back, I'll re-enter. So I might be able to pick it up right back to where, it, where I ex exited. So let's say I exited somewhere in here. Uh, it'd be great if I could re-enter here, and all I did was remove my exposure to risk, which was the whole point. Okay. And I got out of NASDAQ because it's it's got the highest beta. If you're and you're like, it doesn't quite make sense. Well, uh, it's got the lowest variance squared. Okay, anyways. So going back to here, uh, this is great. Uh, yep, we are in a zone, a little bit of a worry zone on a daily chart. Okay. So I think ideally what happens is we actually make a higher high of some sort, a higher low, and then we finish with a bit of a Santa Claus rally that gets us probably to here. And then, uh, I don't know, Fed meeting, right? Fed meeting. Does everyone know when the Fed meeting is? December 13th, 2 p.m. Oh, well, that's the actual announcement. Hey, are you coming to the party in Nashville? Thank you, Yusuf. Two seventeen. Let me bring it up. Oh, that's the wrong one, though, isn't it? Uh, November 9th, is that today? Yeah, that's today. All right. Yeah, you guys going to come to uh, N Nashville December 13th? Give me an opportunity to, to shake your hand, look you in the eye, buy you a drink. How many people are into coming to the act, not just the capital, but the epicenter of American country music. We are going to be at the site of the Grand Old Opry. We're not in the Grand Old Opry, but it's right there, the Grand Old Opry. Epicenter of American country music. Ah, where there's real cowboys. Although we'll be in a hotel full of tourists, uh, so uh, probably not any real cowboys. But if you stay a few days longer and uh, kind of venture around, you can get, you can see some cowboys and some cowgirls, <laughs> cowboys. Anyways. Yeah. Yeah. Just slightly above average, but okay. Is that right, Greg? Yeah. I put together a site. Uh, 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 Investorbootcamp.com slash party. I think that's it. There we go. 
I haven't sent out an email yet, but um, I suppose I should. I've just been shy. Yeah, you should you should come to the party. Yeah, it's within reason, right, Highlander? Yeah, so anyways, uh, it's a nice restaurant. They have uh, uh, Wagyu beef, Wagyu beef. Yeah, so anyways, uh, check it out investorbootcamp.com slash party. It's going to happen. It's, it's real. I'd like, it'd be great if, if you were there. All right. Oh yeah, Greg. Greg's right. Like, uh, it's one of the most amazing hotels in the world, Right. You'd expect to find something like this in Dubai or Saudi Arabia or something. Uh, consider it like a giant Las Vegas casino with um, no gambling and half the prostitutes. <laughs> I don't know about the second one, but <laughs> but no gambling. Like this, it's the largest hotel in America that's not a casino. So when you walk in, you're going to go, holy snap. Yeah. It, it's like when you walk in the front door, it's probably a half an hour walk to get to the party. Yeah. Like, oh, my God. It's amazing. So uh, you're going to love it. You're going to absolutely love it. If you find the hotel too expensive, don't worry about it. I'm sure within a five-minute Uber drive, you're going to find a hotel like that's in the neighborhood of 100 to 150 bucks. Just Uber over. It's all good, bro. Just don't drink and drive. But just be there. Come on. All right, so uh, so that's what I, I got my eye on. Uh, it, it's going to probably be later in the day that that wimps out, but I'm worried about the wimping out. Uh, I have wimping out syndrome. And uh, I've been trying to be uh, as brave as one can be using technical analysis and letting these winners run. And uh, right now... We had that big drop off of, you know, this is the scary part. Uh, I, I don't believe the market is right on the direction, but I, I'm, I'm fine with it. And I believe it's gone too far. And like when I look at NASDAQ, it's gone exactly two standard deviations and stopped. And all these different worries. And then I think Jay Powell is going to come out and uh, tell us that this upward move is a rational exuberance. Uh, and he'll want to cool it off. And I, and I, and I think this is what I think or what I feel. How about that? I feel like it's going to do that, but nonetheless, um, I'm trying to be a thinking man. I have a Harvard degree for crying out loud. So I say, well, I am going to ride that 21 and unless it's broken, then this is going up unless there's a lower low, then this will continue up. So I'm hanging on for dear life. Okay. Okay, and you can see the upward bound target here. Conserv the conservative target is uh, 34482, about. 
Okay, can we just say 34 and a half? Yeah. On the no diggity, no Dow. Okay. Yeah, no diggity, no Dow. All right, so let's do some commodities. Yeah. By the way, Highlander, I hope you make the drive. I think that's awesome. Right, I think jean Guy's going to make a similar drive. I think Denise is going to make a similar drive. I'm going to do a drive. It's not that far, but nonetheless... Because I'm bringing some stuff for the presentation uh, uh, for my CIA meeting. So I, I think instead of flying, I'll drive it. Yeah. So, uh, so anyways, cool, 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 cool. It'd be great. All right. So let's start with Bitcoin. Okay. Bitcoin is, you're right not trading at, uh, I mean, it's trading at three standard deviations and even beyond. By the way, you can update this. One standard deviation, two standard deviations. Three standard deviations, okay? So why is it moving so quickly? It's not moving fundamentally. So this is all in regards to SEC allowing ETFs, ETF strategies on, on Bitcoin. And then the next one would most likely next year be Ethereum. So, uh, so anyways, it's, uh, it's quite volatile based on um, uh, news. Not necessarily just, you know, uh, a representation like this asset class isn't representing mark uh, economic conditions. Okay, this is in particular Bitcoin news. Oops, I didn't want that one. Delete. Uh, draw standard deviation. I don't want. I don't want equidistant. Where's my other one? Oh, here you go. Linear regression. Why is this not? There we go. No, can't get it quite the same. I don't know where one of these is off. I can't grab it. Oh, I see. It's not measuring to the top. There we go. All right. So anyways, that's one way that you might want to look at it. Uh, it is bullish. Uh, and buying the dips, I suppose, is the right strategy. So I have my I have my price action pivot points. I have linear regressions and standard deviations all drawn drawn on there. Okay. Very cool. Very cool. So a bullish rally. The only problem is since it's news driven, it could collapse at any at a, any point. Uh, if you're a buyer of uh, oil, you have permission to engage. Okay. You have permission to engage if you want. Okay, you we hit a zone of support. And it's trying to bounce around. It's also a 618, right? Fibonacci retracement from the previous high. So if you want to start doing stuff like this, you can. And I'm worried that that brings the stock market down.
Mike says, can we have a look at uh, CAD pairs? Did you vote? Only 15% of people want to look at CAD. So currently, um, we don't have the votes, Mike. By the way, yeah, thank you for voting. So anywho, what do you guys think? Something like that is going to wake up? I think it's quite possible. I covered this up trade in the day trading group yesterday. Yeah. And the interesting thing is uh, that's plan A and there is no plan B. There wasn't. I'm serious. This is there. This either works or there's no trade. There's no follow-on trade. But we cover mm -hmm. that in the day trading. Yeah. Okay. Like I said, this is a six one eight of the bigger move. I got to go out to this chart. So the idea now is uh, a return to 85, okay? Or a return to 65. And that's where I'm like, there is no plan B. If this trade fails to go up, uh, uh, there is no plan B until we're way down here, but that ain't soon. So um, up from here. Up or out? Okay, what do you think? Yeah. So, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yep, yep, mm-hmm. You have permission to engage now. You do you. You do you. You do you. All right, we'll do uh, uh, gold. And it's still dropping down to our support line. Okay, remember the prediction here that we did, uh, oh, I don't know, was it Monday? Yeah, Monday. Uh, so, we're you know, that's the ultimate drop here. And that happens to be the distance from uh, this top to the neckline. So as we get closer, it gets more and more complicated, right? So now we're in that 1950 realm, and that's pretty good for now. It can go a little lower, okay? 1925 would be too low, so this could be it now, this 1950. The next drop is way lower, so I have a medium term price of basically 1900, a little less, and then a longer term price of 1800. But the idea is in this period, you don't need to own gold. Okay, but we do know, and I can prove to you, uh, there's an accumulation of longer term institutional investors that are buying the dip. Now, a trader like you and I, we're much shorter term. So like, you know, we'll take it down here and then maybe we'll turn it around and be bullish there. Well, someone else has already decided, um, probably since this period, to accumulate positions, which means they buy on the way down, not sell on the way down. Okay. Okay because they believe in, in, in the future of this asset. For example, we could, we could be stuck at 3% inflation and 1.5% uh, GDP. 
Therefore, you, gold would probably perform. Right now, we have 4.9, so you don't need to do this, okay, versus 3.8. So, uh, so you don't need to be hedging now, but if you need to be hedging in the future, based on what you think the next five years is going to be like, then there are those that are accumulating, and I can see it, the actual accumulation, the actual contracts. And something that quant box shows. Yeah. Nice to know, right? So I get that from the commitment of traders report that literally speculative institutional traders like hedge funds are buying this on the way down, which means they believe it'll go up in the future. Good to know. Good to know. So that was gold, oil, Bitcoin, and uh, NASDAQ, S&P 500, and Dow. How am I doing so far? Did you click the thumbs up button? Would you please take a second to do that? And then I will cover the currency you want me to cover. It, right now... The highest vote is Euro, so I'll do Euro Dollar, Euro Pound, Euro Aussie, Euro Kiwi, Euro Yen, Euro whatever. Okay, yeah. Cool. Very nice. Thank you, Pete. All right, uh, all right, so three, no, I'll do a 10, 10, 10, 10, 9, 9, 9, 9, 8, 8, 8, 7, get your votes in, 6, 6, 6, 6 5, 5, 5, 4, 4, 4, 3, 3, 2, 2, 2, 1. All right, easy winner here is Euro. Yes. Now this there's the next step. All right, so we are picking euro. Although why didn't the why didn't the poll pop the the results? Do you guys see it? I don't see it. It was easily euro. Well, so anyways, it should have popped it. Maybe I clicked the wrong No. Ooh, there it is. Wow, really laggy for me. All right, so clearly Euro. Okay, so now in the chat, tell me Euro versus what? What, what, let's say, what, let's say if I were to cover three different Euro pairs, let me know what you're most interested in. Santiago, Euro pound. Pete, Euro dollar. Please type in the chat now, which Euro pair would you like me to cover? Euro CAD, Euro Aussie, Euro Aussie. Euro dollar. Euro Kiwi. Euro yen. Euro dollar. Euro czar. Euro dollar. Come on, guys. Euro yen, euro dollar. Yeah. That's it. Nobody did euro Swissy or anything? Euro pound, euro dollar. Noki. Euro Aussie. All right. Euro Kitty Cad, yep, yep. Nobody asked for Euro Cad, but it makes sense. Aussie and dollar. All right, so obviously we got to do Euro Dollar. Many of you also wanted Euro Aussie. Let's take a look at the price action. 
And uh, I'm going to now highlight old, uh, old support. And it's already labeled and everything, as you can already see. But we have this developing. And uh, what you want to look for today, well, let's say this week, it's really weekly analysis, is something like that. Does that make sense? Do 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 do. We can go to a smaller time frame if you wish. And you rinse and repeat, and you're like, is that a higher low? Oh, I can't grab the indicator now. Uh, well, we'll have to, oh, there we go. What do you think? Higher low? Game on? What do you think? Game on? Rich is already long off the bottom. You must have been days ago. Okay. Well, what we have here is double bottom, higher high, and this is the higher low. And we call that a one, two, three. And that should be game on. Okay. And in particular, this is in context of the bigger move. And the bigger move, oops. The bigger move, delete, is uh, this move. Okay, what do you stink? Smell like a plan? Okay, that's the daily plan. And then the hourly plan is this one, which is all part of the same plan. Day trading versus swing trading. They're the same thing, just different time frames. Are you in for uh, are you in for uh, four hours or are you gonna be in for four days or are you gonna be in for four weeks? Okay. So this is a breakout. Nice, right? Betsy's like Euro dollar. This is Euro dollar. Okay, drop into a smaller time frame and we just rallied up into the mean. Okay, which creates the scenario for the rest of the day of a higher high and then a higher low pullback and then probably something like that tomorrow. All right, so that's that one. Let me move over. Let's do this. Lots of people ask for Euro Aussie. Nobody asked for Euro Swissy. Uh, okay. Uh, I'm not sure why, but okay. Um, let's go to the daily here. 
And uh, this is the same price it was a week ago when I said, really, this is the one you want to do. Uh, so I'm back in there. Um, we're in a range at the top, right? We had a range at the bottom. Okay. And the problem is we're at the middle of the range. So I propose to you, uh, nothing's happened yet. This is not a great time or a price. Even if you had bought down here, it's a little bit of a hope, unless there was a psych level or something going on there. And for you would, you would, uh, I would imagine in this situation you're still bullish. So you can clearly see I have a uptrend analyzed. So. A bull is thinking like they're going to get here at some point, right? Uh, that would be like the next month or so. Um, there's a bit of a cautionary tale here, though. And uh, a bear is going to think like, yeah, it's working its way around this way. Okay, that's fine. So we'll see. Hasn't happened yet, but... The move to the upside is definitely slowed, okay? And we've definitely already hit our projected high for the year. But based on technical analysis, you could go for R2 this year. 173. So there's a lot of pips, but you got a lot of work to do yet. Okay, there's a lot of work to do yet. Okay, well, I don't believe the euro as a currency reflects the health of the European economy. I think the euro gets pushed around by the US dollar. So if we have risk on, okay, okay, if, well, how about this? If risk on, then dollar weak, then euro appreciates, irregardless of what's going on in Europe. And I watched the ECB for almost 20 years now, or actually for, for 20 years, it's amazing. Um, when the, EC, the ECB complains when the euro's strong and they try to make it weak, and then the euro's weak and the ECB complains because they're trying to make it strong, and no matter what they do, whatever policy and procedures they implement, it just seems to me the value of the euro is dictated by what the dollar is doing. Risk on or risk off. Sorry. Okay. Okay. Okay, but let me, uh, let me get into, am I in the right account? Yeah, I think so. Uh, like I can show you. Because a common question is, how do you know if it's risk on or risk off? Well, that's your job. If you don't know that, you don't know how to trade. You're not going to trade successfully. If you don't know if it's risk on or risk off in the marketplace, then I don't know how you figure out what to do. You're just randomly throwing down trades based on gut feelings. So anyway, so... To make the job a little easier, I have automated the process. So long-term, medium-term, and then now. This is like U.S. session. You should be bullish on Aussie, Euro, CAD, Kiwi, Gold, and the S&P 500. You should be bearish on Swissy, Yen, and Dollar. How do we get to that conclusion? We look at... 
the VIX, which is a measure of volatility. We look at gold. We look at yen. We look at dollar. We look at S&P 500. And we look at bond yields as a basket. What's going on now? What's going on this week? What's going on this month? And we create baskets. And based on that, we can tell you how risk on me it is. Yeah, what about pound? Same, same. I mean, look, we just didn't want a column of like 900 different things, right? Um, so think of it this way. Sell dollar, sell yen, sell Swissy. Okay. So anyway, so yeah, 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 yeah. So now you you look at this and now you can now you have a general idea of what you're looking for today. Now there's other ways of doing that. So one of the things I talked about this morning in today's video is using like the COT report, right? Let me do that and show you how to like track the flow of money. So up here is the position of money. This is the total money by institutional investors. Money, long oil. Money, long dollar. Money, long Japanese stock market. Money, long gold, right? Short yen, short Aussie, short CAD, short, 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 short. But these are long-term positions by very big institutions. But the other thing that you can do is say, well, what about the flow? And with Quantbox, you can track the flow. Lots of money went into platinum and Aussie and yen. On the flip side, things might be a changing. Yeah, interesting. So... On the short run, instead of using risk gauges, you could try to flow, track the flow of capital. Money went into NASDAQ. Yeah, baby. Okay. Money went into gold. And this is what I was talking about earlier. When gold, gold is down for the week, but I know institutional investors have been accumulating on the way down, which they mean, which you would interpret or extrapolate to mean it's down today, it's down this week, maybe it's down this month. But they think it's going to be up for a year or two or five. Okay? What if you can't, uh, what if it's too powerful, Andrea says, and you can't read it? There's a whole training course, and in fact, maybe even today I'm going to add several, uh, let's say maybe another hour of training. So I'm going to add some more training videos. But there, it comes with a course, so don't worry about it. Plus, I meet with people every day. Okay. Anyway, so you're all Aussie. Great. Uh, not my favorite. I don't know why you're so interested in it. But okay. Uh, it doesn't make sense to me, but whatever. Um, then we flip over here, and this fundamentally makes more sense. There's also lots of room to run and all that kind of stuff. It's sort of like taking your kids to a playground, right? You're like, oh, there's so much room to run. They're going to sleep tonight, right? Cool. So anyways, um, look, if there are bears in this, it's risk off. Do we have a risk off world? No. Will we have one in a week or two? Maybe. So we know if if risk changes from on to off, that is what's going to happen or likely to happen, okay? Is that happening now? No. Could it? Yes. Is it? No. Could it? Yes. Is it? No. Could it? Yes. So we got to trade the what it is doing. And Quantbox says it's risk on and that this is going to go up. So what do we do? Higher high, higher high, low, buy at the 21 central pivot point. If that maintains our low, which means we never go risk off, and the rest of November maintains risk on, we're on our way here, fellas. Way more opportunity than Euro Aussie. Oh my God. But Euro Aussie would also go up. Okay. But nonetheless, this. This is a cleaner trade. 
Up, 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 down, down, by. Up, 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 down, down, by. Up, 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 down, down, by. Up, 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 out. Out. And my my thing is, there's a holiday coming up in a, in a week or two in the United States. So if, if we're going to go here, we got to get it done sooner than that. So maybe it just goes wham. Out. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. So, anyways. That's that one. Euro Swiss Frank. Nice. How about Euro Kitty Cat? Kitty Cat is a dog with fleas. I'm sorry, Canada. You know I love you. Uh, but right now, money is just not flowing your way. Maybe because oil has dropped precipitously. Well, you know what? Euro, uh, oil may be going up. So maybe this is dead in the water. We'll see. So I got to mark all this. Okay. Troublesome trucks right about there. So uh, this is where we now have to start to worry. But nonetheless, we have reality. Luckily, we trade reality. Up, 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 down, down, buy. Up, 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 down, right? Down, down, buy. Up, 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 down, down, buy. Up, 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 up. This is a... Okay, this is a take profit zone on the shorter run. Okay, on the longer run, we have an uh, um, MCPP as a bottom. So that predicts, okay, that predicts we're on our way to 150. Okay, we're only at 147 and change. So here's what it says to me. Okay, up, 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 down, down, somewhere between the 2155 is a buy. Okay, and so that's maybe a buy it at 147. You take it all the way here, it's gonna come down, and then it's gonna go up one more time, and you'll be out at 150. And how do you know that that's going to fail? Because it does one of these things. And maybe maybe the stock market crashes and, and oil goes up. Or maybe oil goes up and crashes the stock market. And we go, okay, we go risk off. And I know what that scenario looks like. Because if you're a bear, this, now I have to do yet another color. Uh, I'll make it sort of a bright, shiny neon blue. This is the best selling pivot of the month of November. So if it go, if it's going to happen, I know what it's going to look like. It's going to be at that price. That's not the trend. I'm concerned about it, but that's not what's happening. It could happen, and if it does, I'll recognize it. In my book, I talk about my my mind's eye. In your mind's eye, if you've already analyzed it and you've already printed out your charts and you've already thought about it, then you can see it. And then for if you've put that much thought into your trade plans and it turns bearish, you recognize it because you've already thought about it in great deal with furious anger. And you say, aha, I know exactly what's happening here. And you already know because you thought about it, you already know what to do. Otherwise, you're just winging it. Okay. Okay. Well, see, that's the thing, Richard. You're probably early, right? So Richard says he's already taken a shot to the south side. Yeah, but it's not bearish. So that's the problem. This is definitely bullish. Okay, it hasn't become bearish yet. At some point, you should recognize it's turned bearish. So 
uh, you're kind of betting a little bit that it's going to be bearish, but it's not bearish. Okay? So you got the right price, but the wrong time. So, for example, now, if it made a lower low, then you, can, you have permission to sell the lower high. Okay? That wouldn't be this week. So that's a longer-term trend. So you got exactly the right price, but it's probably not going to happen. I'm saying is, if it happens, you know what to do next. But right now, this is bullish. Your job is to buy the dip. And there are no bears. There's only victims. <laughs> Sorry, Richard, right? Innocent bystanders. You stood in front of a freight train, and guess what? You got run over. And since you're a retail trader, nobody even noticed. Yeah. Yeah, I have a horrifying memory in my brain. I don't think I can re, 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 uh, erase it. It must be similar to like those that have experienced like uh, combat. But uh, I was on a commuter train once, and uh, a guy jumped in front of it and was hit. And I'm on the commuter train where I have my trench coat on, my suit on, my beautiful tie, my newspaper. I think I even had my briefcase and uh, and uh, an umbrella because I worked in San Francisco. So I'm like a proper British banker. So anyways, I'm sitting on the train, and it drove by, and there he was on the side, and I saw him. Yeah, that was the second time in my life I saw something like that. I saw a guy be, uh, hit by a bus when I was a kid. A motorcycle. Yeah. And uh, I saw that too, which is a curious thing. So anyways, uh, you don't want to be an innocent bystander. Uh, you don't want to get run over by a, a train, a bus, anything, right? So anyways, never, ever sell against a trend. You never sell in an uptrend. Now, there's one rule of engagement that I teach where if you were going to sell against an uptrend or buy against a downtrend, uh, there's one circumstance, and it probably works, what, 60% of the time? Probably. It doesn't work every time, but much of the time. The way I use it is I know even if I've made a ton of money on a trade and it's just been beautiful. The way I use that counter trend trade is to say, no matter how awesome it's been, get out. Just get out. Don't just get out. Okay. You have to have a rule. Like, let's say you were a gambler. You have to have a rule when to walk away from the table. Because you know the longer you stay, the more likely you give it back, right? So in that case, you've done very well for yourself and you've rallied up to a monthly pivot point. You were probably in the previous month. So now you've been in the trade for three weeks and it's just rallied up like crazy. Three weeks of nothing but love. And now it's like, today is the eighth, right? Or eighth or ninth or whatever. You hit, the, you hit the new target, and you just had three weeks of nothing but love. Take the money and run. 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 Now, the flip side of that coin is, well, can you sell there? Yes, you can if you want to and under those rules of you know, conditions and stuff. But what I don't want you to do is to only counter trend trade. Therefore, I'm like, dude, you're giving up trends for counter trends. That's not productive. 
But if you if you see the opportunity and you know how to analyze it and you know how to manage your risk and, and all that kind of stuff, by all means. And they've worked out beautifully recently, beautiful counter trends the way I teach them. But I wouldn't make it your only thing. Have a great day.